My job for this evening is to start some seedlings. Last year I started some seedlings uh, for our garden and some of it worked, some didn't work so well. But this year I'm starting it a whole month earlier than last year and it's still really cold outside so I'm going to do that inside the RV and because of the potential of it making a lot of mess I will do that in the bathroom. This year I'm trying something new and I will use soil blocking technique to start my seeds. For now I'm going to start chives, uh, yellow bell peppers, red bell peppers and a cabbage. So I have my soil prepared here and I have this soil blocker. This makes two by two inch uh, soil blocks and uh, we'll see how this works. To prepare the soil I used a mix of uh, potting soil and uh, coconut core. And some blocks are going to go into these uh, containers that we use from takeout. Wow, they're pretty sturdy. I like it. And here we go, I have soil blocks for the current set of things that I'm going to plant and it's interesting, they seem sturdier than I imagined so I could handle them moving from um, where I pushed them out into these uh, trays so now let's see them I have sown the seeds and now I'm going to cover them with a little bit of soil. So the first batch of seeds is ready and I have put them here under the aero gardens and we'll use uh, the aero garden lights uh, to help these guys uh, grow better. And why are we doing this in the bathroom in the RV? Because it's really, really cold outside and it's much warmer here. I think it's currently about 24 degrees outside. Plus the water is here too. Yeah. The warm water. These are green onions and they're doing really well. Here, just yesterday, we seeded more seeds. So this is kale, dill, and basil. And then these are tomatoes. This set is doing really well. And then here we have cabbage in these, and these have already been thin. All three seeds uh, sprouted, so we thinned to one. And then here we have parsley, and then in the back there is one set of uh, bell peppers and then here we have another set of bell peppers chives um, didn't really come out so I seeded some more chives yesterday in there and see 
mother. Those will come out. And then finally here we have more tomato plants. The snow has started to melt slowly, but there is still enough snow in the area where we want to put more raised beds. So that project is on hold for now. Also the, um, the last year's raised bed is still covered with snow. So even though right now spinach and a few other things could go in the ground, like sweet peas, but it's just, it's covered with snow. So it can't do that for now. The very first thing that has come out this year in the garden, in our forest garden, is these ramps. As soon as the snow melted, maybe I think within a week, they started popping up. These are ramps and they're kind of wild. It's a little bit like garlic. We want to grow a lot of our own food and have a large garden, but we are very new to gardening. Also, our focus right now is on the build, so there is not much time left for gardening. But I want to start somewhere. Last year, we started with a 4x8 garden bed, and this year, I want to increase our garden size. What do you mean you don't screech your raised beds? <laughs> what are you even doing? I'll take you inside and show my seedlings. Unfortunately, these guys are not doing so well. So these are peppers, and then behind there you have tomato seedlings, and they're not really growing tall at all. We started them without a heat map, but then later, because they were not growing very fast, we added it, and it seems to be helping a little bit. Now these pepper plants are starting to get like small uh, green leaves but the tomato plants are not really changing. Interestingly, that under the same conditions, um, these Amish-based tomatoes, they, these grew larger, so I repotted them in uh, larger um, pots, but they started the same way as the other ones. These seedlings here, I've been putting outside for the last uh, about a week or so to harden them, and the chives, um, cabbage, and uh, parsley is going to go outside today and uh, kale and basil will go later. Let's go and transplant these guys. This is our herb planter from last year and we got some mixed results. Chives are perennials and they're doing really well. They came up quite early after the snow melted. And then this is rosemary. I transplanted the one from nursery last year and even though it's a perennial, it does not survive Vermont winter, so you really have to bring it inside over winter. I'll have to pull this one out. Oof, that's a good root system. So chives didn't germinate much this year. I put a lot of seeds in each of these, but there's only a few that came out. This is from using last year's seeds, so I wonder whether for chives just the seeds deteriorated that much more in one year compared to other things. But I'll um, plant them next to the other chives and uh, we'll see how they do. In addition to the seedlings, I also started parsley here in this area and it's starting to sprout nicely. So I'll put the seedlings kind of next to it. And earlier this year, I have amended this soil with uh, compost. This year we had to buy the compost, but hopefully in the future we'll have our own. There are some things sprouting out in this square and I didn't seed anything this year in here. So either it's weeds or maybe it's something from last year, like maybe dill or a basil of self-seeding. So I'll let them grow a little bit and um, 
see what comes out of it. This is the rice bed that we started last year and already have uh, seeded some things in it. First, uh, the strawberries from last year have survived. I already have transplanted the green onions that I started inside. And uh, radishes over here have germinated well. And here, white turnips are just starting. They're like super, super tiny. And then here in these two squares, I have sweet peas. They look like they're doing quite well. Carrots are barely starting to germinate. And uh, beets are in those two squares and they haven't germinated yet. Spinach has germinated somewhat. There should have been nine per square, but like some are missing, even though I put multiple seeds in a spot. So these are also last year's seeds, so maybe that is the problem. Arugula are in these four squares and it doesn't really seem to be coming up. Oh, actually, maybe it is. It's super tiny over here. So now I'm going to transplant my cabbages over here. One, two, three, four. One cabbage per square. The cabbage seedlings are tiny, so I hope they survive and they start growing well, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I might have to uh, get some from the nursery. I also added compost to this uh, garden bed. Uh, I just used uh, one bag uh, for the whole um, raised bed and I incorporated it in the top um, kind of two, three inches. First though, I pulled the wood chips back and now depending on the plant, I can uh, put them back on. Well, here you go. Garden coming together, slowly but surely. Strawberries and the strawberry planter are doing well. Um, they came up with green leaves pretty soon after the snow melted. Uh, so that's a good sign. Hopefully they will produce quite a lot this year. This year we are expanding our garden by two raised beds. Last year to do the raised beds in the log uh, kind of cabin style, that was my idea. Uh, this year uh, we're doing Matt's design, uh, which is from our own lumbar. So I milled uh, two by fours in actual dimensions of two inches by four inches and uh, built these two raised garden beds. I was trying to figure out what height they want and um, I settled on 24 inches high. But then as uh, Matt was building them, I realized that like actually 20 inches is very good height for uh, sitting in them. So uh, that's what we uh, kept it at. So these are four by eight raised beds just in the middle section here. We have uh, one support on each side. Otherwise they seem to be very sturdy. And we filled them with wood chips on the bottom half. And then there is one yard um, in each bed of compost topsoil mix and a little bit of sand in there for drainage too. We bought that in bulk and we transported that on our uh, equipment trailer. So yay for that. We filled the beds right to the very top, but then we had some heavy rains. So with the rains, it settled a little bit down. I think that's okay um, because these beds are going to have tomatoes and peppers and um, I will uh, mulch them with um, wood chips. So that will bring the level almost uh, to the top. And um, I think that will be totally fine. So I'm very excited to expand our garden and uh, hopefully we have a uh, good production this year. We also did a lot uh, to this area here. We moved a lot, kind of a lot of soil from our topsoil pile uh, in here to kind of make it more flatter and to go right uh, to the edge here. And we wood chipped this whole area. So now this whole area from the up here raised beds to way down there and under the uh, lumber piles is all wood chipped. So now it looks really nice. We got our hammock here. I'll put a fire pit over here. And then 
we do plan on planting a few trees. So we plan on planting an apple tree there, an apple tree here, 15 feet apart, dwarf apple trees. And then maybe here we can plant another tree and maybe on a slope down there another tree. I still need to research that. As I said, I'm, learn I'm new to gardening and I'm learning as I go and uh, apple trees looks like you need to have two so that they can pollinate each other. And uh, another tree that I really like to grow is a persimmon tree. I really love eating persimmons and apparently there are some varieties that can withstand the Vermont's cold. Now I just need to figure out in which nursery I can find one. Because we covered such a large area with wood chips, our wood chip pile is empty. So now we're gonna let the ground and the trees recover a little bit. I'm not sure the trees like having big weight of wood chips kind of sitting on their roots. So we'll let it be. So instead we'll use this area as a log pile uh, from the trees that we're felling now in the spring. I planted two hazelnut trees last year and uh, this one is doing really well. It is uh, blooming and the leaves are coming out. So this one here, it has buds coming out, but barely. So I hope this one does as well as the other ones, but good news, they have survived the winter. I love ramps because that's the first sign that the spring is here. They're still here, although now the weather in the early May is starting to get warmer, so they're probably gonna wilt soon and will be done. But it's good to see the patch coming back. I hope over the years the patch grows even larger. I've been using the ramp leaves as uh, just herbs, adding into cooking and salads. And uh, I also really like it uh, in guacamole. I have expanded my raspberry patch. So these five were here last year. One of them didn't survive, one of them, I'm not sure, we'll see. And then a neighbor was getting rid of um, their raspberries and was giving them away for free. So I um, transplanted some in here. Um, there are a lot of them, so I put uh, two in each hole. So this is probably more dense than uh, they should have been, but I didn't really have more space where to put the raspberries, so for now, they are planted fairly densely. We'll see which one of them survives. So then maybe after pruning back, that's gonna be the right amount. So that's now for our garden update. Hopefully the pepper and tomato seedlings are going to grow. And next thing will be to transplant them into the red garden beds. It's time to transplant these seedlings. These tomatoes have grown quite a lot, which is great. But these tomatoes, are still really small. This is uh, May 21st in Vermont, zone four. And um, bell peppers are also quite small, but we're going away for 10 days and uh, we can't leave them inside the RV because we won't be able to water them and they're probably gonna dry out and die. So we'll have to risk it and put them outside. Technically the last average last frost date has passed, but um, in a couple of days, it's gonna get down to 39. Um, so hopefully these guys survive, but if not, I mean, they won't, won't survive in the RV without watering for 10 days, at least outside it's gonna rain and there's you know more soil and we can mulch it and so on. So it should keep the moisture, but um, yeah, we'll see our luck. And if it doesn't work out, we'll just go to nursery and buy uh, new starts. This is our first time trying to start a tomato and pepper plants from seed and um, you know, I think it's with mixed success. I think the small ones should have been much larger by now, but um, it is what it is. I had dill in this herb planter last year and it looks like it has seeded itself and new dill is coming up here, which is very exciting. I do have uh, some transplants that I started inside, so I'll transplant that. Oh, and here um, I bought oregano uh, from a nursery, but I waited like two days before transplanting and I forgot to water it and now it's pretty much dead. But there is a few new things coming up, so maybe it will be fine and will survive. But yeah, that's unfortunate, completely my fault.
So we got four cherry tomatoes in the back, four early girls here in the front. And then this bed has six Amish pastes. And then we have four of yellow bell peppers and four of red bell peppers. And here we have a volunteer, something like pumpkin or zucchini. And I think I'll leave it there and see what comes out of it. Today is the first morning I'm harvesting strawberries. This one is early glow strawberry. And then this one is all-star strawberry. Last year I lost strawberries to chipmunks, so this year I'm covering with uh, deer netting. These are the three originals that I got last year. And now let's check out how the stands are doing. These strawberries here I propagated uh, last year from the originals. And these are doing really well. They're really tall and some really big berries. These bell peppers are really not doing well. They're still really tiny. So at the store, we brought seedlings. So these are four Golden California, and these are four Purple Beauties. So hopefully these do better. So I will plant them. Something is doing mischief in my garden. These peas were growing so well, and I had all of them tied up to the top. Um, but then one day, they were like falling off like this, so I spent time to hanging them up again, and they were down again. And I don't think it's weight issue. I think there might be some animal maybe trying to like go down them because some of the lines were like strung out outside of this garden bed. So I'll try a different strategy this time. So I think that's a little bit better compared to them being on the ground, but it's probably still not ideal. Otherwise, the strawberries are producing, which is great, but I also see something eating the strawberries. Looks like something's eating the radishes as well. Something's eating probably snails, uh, kale and cabbage. And this year again, the spinach is just not going well, as well as I think it should. And arugula is also really spotty. The persimmon tree is doing good. I've sown spaghetti squash twice and it is getting eaten by all these stems. But this is zucchini and some of it is also getting eaten. Hopefully one of the plants will survive found a snail eating a strawberry. I tried growing cucumbers from seed twice now, but um, they either didn't come up or they were eaten by, I don't know what, probably slugs. So I got these uh, from Home Depot. They were on a special price, pickling cucumbers and uh, it's like uh, two pickling cucumbers and, uh, oh no, I guess three pickling cucumbers and two slicing cucumbers. This is the area where I have two hazelnut plants and uh, my neighbor was getting rid of two thornless blackberry bushes in pots that they didn't have space to plant in. So I'm gonna plant them here. I think I'll plant one of the blackberries here in the front and one in the back. The hazelnut trees going to grow large eventually, but in the meantime, maybe the blackberries will have a chance to propagate. I think the one in the back may not receive as much sun, but uh, it still should get decent amount of sunshine. Okay, let's get to work. I measured my spot right behind that one, and I started digging and I found this huge rock. So I'll need to dig a little bit on the side to get the depth that I need for this blackberry. The variety on the back is Arapaho. 
And then the variety in the front is Prime Arc Freedom. Well, I think it's time to harvest some peas. It is July 13th and we have our first raspberries. So exciting. Very exciting, a raspberry patch is giving quite a few raspberries. It is end of July and I'm going to give you a garden update. July has been very, very wet weather. It has rained a lot, including some serious floods in Vermont. And I'm so happy we have these uh, raised beds because I think that's the reason the tomatoes are still alive. They have grown very tall and they're already starting to produce fruit. So these are six Amish based plants that I grew from seed. The marigold here I started from seed and it is uh, growing very slowly, only now it's going to start to flower soon. The bell pepper plants are so-so, they're still quite small, even these store-brought ones from nursery are also still quite small. Here I have a volunteer plant, it is some sort of squash or zucchini. And it is starting to bear fruit, which is very exciting. These four tomato plants here are early girls and they are also starting to produce fruit. And then in the back here we have cherry tomatoes. The cherry tomatoes I started from seed and when I transplanted them, they were this tall and they stayed small for a very, very long time. So I thought they're not going to make it and I bought uh, some cherry tomatoes from nursery, but in the end, the ones that I seeded from seed outgrew the ones bought at the nursery. And all of them are starting to produce small cherry tomatoes. This is a purple variety. I can't wait for all these tomatoes to ripen and see how they taste. I'm very happy we set up these barrels, but actually in July we did not end up using them because it seems that this has been raining every single day. Only this week we finally have had a few days of no rain. The two apple trees are doing pretty well and I actually removed some of the apples so that instead of producing the apples, the tree goes into producing more of the roots. I did find um, some beetles that are eating the leaves and I think they are the, they look brown and I think they are oriental beetles instead of Japanese beetles, but I still have been trying to pick them off and uh, lately I haven't seen them anymore. Those same beetles also appeared on the persimmon trees. This zone is kind of on the border for the persimmon trees to grow, so we'll see whether they will make it or not. And this one has black dots on the leaves that I haven't figured out yet what they are for. Matt got these solar lights and uh, they look pretty cool at night. The strawberries did great. And with this deer netting, the chipmunks this year did not get to them. So I did actually get to harvest some strawberries. They're now sending a lot of runners. So now I will put the ends in some dirt and pot and uh, then I will transplant them and have more strawberry plants. I'm very happy with the herb garden. The chives have done amazingly well and I eat them all the time. The dill grew from last year and uh, cilantro grew also pretty well. And there, got some oregano and thyme. In the pots here, I have some more marigolds. And then this is mint that did end up surviving from last year. In the original garden bed, I have had a lot of slugs. It's been really hard to deal with them. And I've been picking them all the time, but they more and more appear. And uh, that's 
because of the super wet summer here this year. Green onions have done well. The strawberries that I transplanted from the runners uh, last year, they gave fruit as well. And look how tall and lush they've grown. Cucumbers, I tried planting them multiple times and they got eaten every single time. So then I gave up and bought these uh, larger plants from the nursery. And so far they've been doing okay. They even have small cucumbers in them. Well, I think it's time to tie them up so that they grow taller. The kale has been doing pretty well, except the slug has been eating them here and there. You need to give me some tips about how to grow spinach. This spinach kind of grew really small with not very large leaves and then suddenly it bolted. So I haven't really had any harvest of the spinach. The carrots seem to be doing pretty well uh, this year compared to last year. I thinned them early and they seem to be doing okay. So hopefully they grow quite large. Here are more kale plants. These were the ones that I bought from the nursery. These kale plants here, I grew from seed and I think slugs got to them quite early on so they haven't really grown taller. Like that one is pretty much completely eaten. So the cabbage did not survive at all. Here's another, that was supposed to be a cabbage. And there's another one. For the longest time, arugula didn't really want to grow, but now it is large and lush. I think the rain this year really has helped it. This year I planted beets for the first time. And uh, yeah, we'll see how large they grow. I mean, this one looks pretty good, but we'll see how tall it grows in the end. The peas seem to grow here very nicely. Ooh, there's some more flowers. So I'll definitely keep growing peas in next year. These are white turnips and look like some of them are getting larger. I guess that seems kind of late. I picked some earlier this year and they were still very small. The radishes just always seems really small and um, they stayed small and they actually went into the seed. So far I haven't had good luck with growing radishes. So overall this garden bed I think struggled in the beginning of the year. Things were just not growing much. But uh, I think it's recuperating and I think I can keep growing kale, arugula and peas and uh, definitely strawberries in this bed. So that's my veggie garden. So now let's check out some more bushes and trees. These two hazelnut trees seems to be doing well, although I haven't seen them flower yet. And then these, these two are new blackberry bushes and uh, they are flowering. And I think we'll get some berries as well. The raspberry patch is developing slowly and I did get a few berries. This is a larger one. I don't know what any of these are because I've gotten them from neighbors. They're all delicious. We also built a campfire and finally we had our first campfire of the season only a few days ago. That's because it just has been raining so much. Also the power has been out quite a lot this year compared to the previous years. So we'll definitely want to have some battery backup system in the utility building. Turns out this volunteer plant is a spaghetti squash. We've got one large spaghetti squash and there are a few small ones forming but we'll see whether they will grow large enough before harvesting. It is mid-August and the tomatoes are just taunting me. They are still not ripening, but there are so many of them and they're so large. So I'm very excited about the crop, but I want them to turn red already. This is our first cherry tomato of our season. Do you want to try it? Yeah. That is amazing. That is. Is it ripe? Was it ripe? I'm not sure. I should probably have another one. Too <laughs> no, <ripe>. that's mine. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> so this tomato finally started ripening, but it's. Um, I saw that it's starting to rot, so I guess that's why it uh, fell from over here. But I think we can also harvest this tomato. I think that looks really ripe. And maybe this one too. 
I'm so excited to finally start harvesting our tomatoes. It is mid-September and the tomatoes are doing really well. So now it is time for the first batch of tomato sauce. I'll make it all from the Amish paste tomatoes. The early girl and cherry tomatoes are also doing really well. Although the tomatoes are so heavy, they're causing the branches to fall down. Especially after heavy rains. So I hope these survive. Dark cherry varieties are getting there slowly. Well, I think this spaghetti squash is ready to harvest. So that's what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> oh, it's pretty hard to do with scissors. Well, I got it. This looks great. So excited. I got a few more spaghetti squashes on this one, so hopefully they will ripen before the frost. Temperatures soon are going to get down to 35 overnight, so let's start harvesting some of these green tomatoes. It is second half of October and it's getting close to freezing temperatures at night, so I think it will be safer if I harvest this spaghetti squash. Deep freeze is coming, so it's time to harvest beets and carrots. The beets look fairly small, so not big hopes for them. Oh, look at that one. That one's fairly big. Some are really small. Only one good sized beet came out and all the other ones are actually quite small. Not sure why they don't grow larger. And I even tried thinning them this year. They still didn't grow large. The carrot stalks look pretty good. Let's see how large they are. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. Finally something good came out. Ah. So this year I thinned them and I didn't thin them last year. So that's definitely helped. Oh my gosh, look at that. This was the rainbow color carrot mix. Huh? That's it for carrots? But I'm very happy with the haul this year. That's just two square feet of carrots. And with that, our second year of gardening on our homestead is done. Thanks for watching!